Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about how to get 3D objects into your videos. I have done this topic before but I have a update for you that'll make the whole process a lot easier. So I really feel it deserves a, a revisit of this tutorial. Now this procedure will help you get 3D objects into iMovie, it'll help you get objects into Final Cut, Adobe After Effects, uh, Sony Vegas, things like that. And I always find this very fun in movie making. I love seeing all the 3D objects the people have made. Now one thing you have to note is the 3D objects, you cannot animate individual segments of them. Like for me, I can't animate the eyeball from looking around and I can't animate the light as well. I have to do that myself in my movie editing program. So another example would be if you have a helicopter you can't have the helicopter blades spinning around. What you'd have to do is animate helicopter blades on your own later. So keep that in mind this is only for still 3D objects. So I'm going to go through the tutorial from the beginning, how to get the program, how to record your screen, and how to set up scenes and change the background to green so you can edit it. So let's get started. First off, go to Google and type in Google SketchUp. Click on the one that is not talking about the warehouse. We'll get into that later. Click on this one here. It'll take you to this web page. Now you don't have to buy the pro version at all. You can just download the trial if you want. Or you can go on the side here and just get the older normal versions. Now that we have that downloaded and installed, again you could do either one, the pro version or the non-pro version. Both work equally well. Go to the top here and type in Google SketchUp Warehouse. Click on that link. It'll take you to this page, and this is a place where people have uploaded their 3D models they made in Google SketchUp. This is what we'll be using. So go to the search bar and type in something that you use. I'm going to type in airplane. And then you can open those in new tabs. When you open them in a new tab, you'll come to this web page here. Basically, it'll come default with image, but you don't want to see an image, you want to see 3D view. So then you can use your mouse and drag around and see how your object looks in 3D. Next, go down here and click on the download model. Now, the great thing about Google SketchUp is that all the models take up very small amounts of memory. This one's only 2 megabytes and it's actually very good quality. Now you can type in anything you want in the search bar. People have made so many amazing things in this. People have made cityscapes, landscapes, airplanes, cars, tanks, trains. Some people have made things from video games too. The thing you saw earlier is called the Half-Life 2 Combine Scanner from one of my favorite games that hasn't made Half-Life 3 yet. And for this tutorial, I'm going to cover spaceships, because that's another fun uh, object people really like to use. So once you have the models downloaded, it should be in Google SketchUp. Well, the first thing I recommend doing is pressing the plus button here. That way, it takes up the maximum amount of your screen. Remember, we're going to be recording the computer screen a little later. So this needs to cover as much of the screen as possible. Now let's actually talk about recording the screen real quick. There are a couple programs I would recommend. I used ScreenFlow before and then I found out the QuickTime player can actually record computer screens if you update it. So at the top here when QuickTime's open you go File New Screen Recording and it'll record your screen. This one will record your audio. This one will record through your little peephole on the on the Mac. And 
if you are recording the screen, you can also tell the Mac to record your voiceover. And then you just hit stop record right there. So QuickTime is what I'm using right now. You can also try out other programs. If you're on a PC, I don't really do movie editing on the PC. I do gaming on the PC, but most of my editing is on the Mac. I'm just more comfortable like that. I'm not too knowledgeable about recording your computer screen. However, I do believe you can maybe import these 3D images into things like Sony Vegas and After Effects. I'm not too knowledgeable on that either. Do some research if you're a PC user and maybe you'll make up a tutorial and help out other people as well. So back to Google SketchUp, if you press O on the keyboard it will bring up the orbit tool. What this does is allows you to move your object around. I really like the quality these people have put into these things. It's just amazing. Pressing H on the keyboard will bring up the hand tool and the hand tool lets you drag the object around. Now if you are using your mouse wheel or whatever you use to scroll up and scroll down it'll zoom in on the point your cursor is on. So that can be really handy too. Now why do we need to know how to move these objects? Well we need to make scenes. As you can see here we have a scene right there. Every time I click a scene the object will rotate to that camera position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have the ship do a flyby. So I'm going to press O to bring up the orbit tool. I'm going to bring the ship over here. And I'm going to zoom out on it. Let's have it come from up here. Now that I have the object in position, I'm going to go to the top of the screen and go view, animation, add scene. Now I have two scenes right here. I'm going to add one more scene for the flyby. Zoom in on my ship. Have it go right there. Again I go view, animation, add scene. Now when I click between the two, the object will move between the two scenes on its own. Now if you are not satisfied with how fast it's going or you want it to go a little slower, you can go edit, sorry, you can go view, animation, settings, and you can mess around with the animation settings here. The transition time and delay time are things you want to focus on. So if I want it to fly by real slowly, I would put something like 8 seconds or so. Now when I click the scene buttons, it'll take it a little longer to move across the screen. Now this artist has put a background on the picture, so personally I'm going to use a different background. Now. A lot of you would prefer using a green background, and I'm going to show you how to do that for your animations. So what you're going to do is go to the top of the screen, go to Window, Styles, click on that. It should look something like this. Now this person, because the artist put a background, it has this kind of picture to it. Make sure you click on the default colors. Click on that one. Now this isn't much better than the space one, but we're still getting there. Next, click on edit, and as you can see here, we have some more options here. Click on the third box, and it'll take you to this template here called background. Now we want the background to be a color we like. So let's pick green. Make it a little brighter and then we close the window. Now this isn't quite perfect yet. What we need to do now is go to the top of the screen, click on view, and uncheck all of these things like section planes, axes, guides, uh, possibly shadows, and then it should look a lot better. Now as you can see when I click scenes and things like that it went back to the default background. So 
learn from my mistake. Make sure that when you first open the program, you change your background first. As you can see, as I migrate through different kinds of scenes, it changes from the space background to the default gray-brown background. So I'm going to just emphasize again, you change the background first, then you start adding your scenes. Then you make the scenes go at the speed you want. And then you just record the computer screen. Make sure you keep the mouse out of the way when you want to record the screen. Now one other idea that you could have is if you don't want to make scenes you can drag your object around. The problem with doing this instead of the scenes is my mouse could get in the way. And scenes just look a lot smoother. Now you can pick any color you want. You don't have to pick green. You can pick blue or even red if you're using other advanced programs. And you can animate these very well too. Like I plan on making this have a lens flare, this eyeball will be animated later on, and for the spaceship I might do something with that later. It was just a good example, and I'm a fan of both of these two games anyways. So I hope that helps. If you do use Google SketchUp for iMovie purposes, I do have a tutorial for how to use it in iMovie. So I'll put that link on the screen right now. If you plan on using these in Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Express, I am considering making tutorials for that as well, so just let me know in the comments below. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not an expert in Google SketchUp. I use it once every couple movies or so that I make. So if you have a question, I'll see if I can answer it. Hopefully you guys can help each other in the comments section. So I hope that's good information for you guys and have fun making movies. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make an iMovie tutorial every two weeks. Make sure you hit like so other knows this is a good tutorial. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that way. Make sure to check out the description. I put a lot of work into the description. It provides a nice outline for the tutorial. Frequently asked questions are answered in there. If your question is not answered in the description, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. If you have a special effects request, also post that as a comment. So once again, thanks for subscribing. I look forward to helping you with your movies and your future projects.